Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Be Still My Soul. And today we're looking at Psalm 48. Now, this psalm is, is meant to provide us with uh, a feeling of comfort and strength and joy and, uh, and se security. You see, this psalm is all about how, how God is present with his people. And because he's present with his people, he will preserve them, he will protect them, and he will do them good. And so because God is with us, because God is present, we are secure. No matter what's happening around us, no matter what our circumstances are or what's happening to us, because God dwells with us, even though we're weak, because he's great, we are secure in him. That's what the psalm is all about. And I want us to look at the psalm uh, in three sections. I want us to see God's presence in verses 1 to 3, God's protection in verses 4 to 11, and God's ongoing provision. First of all, God's presence. The psalm begins with these words, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Beautiful in elevation is the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. Within her citadels, God has made himself known as a fortress. Uh, Jerusalem uh, was called the city of God in the Old Testament. It, it uh, was built on Mount Zion. And in the middle of Jerusalem was the temple uh, where God was said to dwell and where God reigned. And because God dwelt in the temple, in Jerusalem, on Mount Zion, the city and the mountain are called holy because God is holy. It's called great because God is great. It's called beautiful because God is beautiful. And it's contrasted with the mountain in the far north where Baal, a rival god from this period of history, was worshipped. But God's mountain's greater. And more beautiful because God is greater and more beautiful. It's described as the joy of all the earth. You see, God now dwells not in a temple, but he dwells with his people, with his church. And the church is meant to be a community of love and of justice because that's what God is like. A, a God of love and a God of justice. And when the church is like that, when it, the church represents God accurately, nations are drawn to it. It is the joy of all the earth because this is the place where there is love and justice because this is the place where God exists, where, where, where God is present. The church isn't always like that. Sometimes the church we find is invisible and, 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 and people ignore it. Other times it's unattractive. People don't like it. But when the church accurately represents the God who's present in it. The church is the joy of all the earth. But not only is God uh, present with his people, but God, we're told secondly about God's protection. You see, God's presence means that he will protect his people. And that leads to fear amongst God's enemies and joy amongst God's people. First of all, we see the fear in verses four to seven. For behold, the kings assembled, they came on together. The, the kings assembling is a bit like uh, reminds us of Psalm 2, where the kings and the nations gather together against God, and there's a, a confidence that comes uh, in a large assembly. Maybe like uh, Sennacherib. He was a, an army uh, general, uh, uh, of, uh, he was a general of the Assyrian army and the Assyrian army came and surrounded Jerusalem massive massive army and yet what happened to them and what happened what will happen to these kings as soon as they saw God's works they flee as soon as they saw it first five they were astounded they were in panic they took to flight trembling took hold of them the anguishes of a woman in labor by the east wind you shattered the ships of Tarshish. In other words, when the kings see the, 
that God is present with his people, they flee. In fact, they tremble like a, a, a young woman in labour. They... <clears throat> And, and why do they tremble? Why, why do they see God's presence? Because with a strong wind, he destroys a great navy. The, the, the pride of Tarshish, these great ships are destroyed by a wind which God sends. You see, God can easily destroy his enemies. 180, that great army of, uh, of Assyria that surrounded Jerusalem, 180,000 of that army died overnight. It died mysteriously. They'd surrounded Jerusalem and were going to destroy it. And 180,000 didn't wake up in the morning. You see, God's power is so great that when people actually see it, they flee in fear. One person described it as, described these, these verses like this. He said, at the same time, let us remember that a nod alone on the part of God is sufficient to deliver us. And that although our enemies may be ready to fall upon us on every side to overwhelm us, it is his power, whenever he pleases, to strike them with amazement of spirit and thus to make their hearts fail in a moment in the very midst of their efforts against us. Let this reflection serve as a bridle to keep our minds from being drawn away to look in all directions for human aid. See, we don't need to look for help from other people when we're in trouble. Because God is God and he's with us. And a nod from him will save us and will destroy our enemies. And that leads to fear for God's enemies, but it leads to, uh, to, to joy for God's people. And for those of us who trust him. That's what the psalmist talks about in verses 8 to 11. He says, as we have heard, so have we seen. You see, God's enemies saw God's power and fled in fear. But when we see God's power, it brings us joy. In the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God will establish forever. God will protect his people. And that provides us the, the evidence of that. When we see God at work, it should not only give us joy, but should strengthen our faith and trust in him. And we're encouraged here to meditate. Verse 9, we have thought on your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. We're to contemplate, to meditate on God's provision, on God's protection, his, on, on his salvation, which comes through his love. Yeah, ultimately, we're to, as God's people, we're to meditate on the cross because the cross is where God's enemies are defeated. Sin is defeated. The devil's defeated. Death is defeated. And the cross is the means of our salvation. As Jesus dies on the cross for our sins, that we might be forgiven, that we might be right with God again. And as we meditate on God's love, demonstrated through the cross, how, how God loved us so much, he sent his son to die to rescue us, to save us, to deliver us. As we meditate on that, it, it brings us joy. It gives us confidence. It makes us feel secure. And the, the result of it should be praise to God. Verse 10. As your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. You see, <clears throat> when we see God's work, God's work of salvation at the cross, it, it shall result in praise. Praise for his goodness, praise for his love, praise for his righteousness. How God is righteous in saving his people and destroying his enemies. And, and that should result in God's fame being spread across the world. Because he is a God of love, because he is a God of righteousness, because everything he does is true and good and right. As as, as God's enemies are judged, so people should across the world praise him. And finally, not only do we see here uh, God's presence and God's protection, but finally God's ongoing provision. Uh, the psalmist concludes the psalm in verses 12 to 14 with an invitation, an invitation to look 
around Jerusalem's defence system and see there a symbol of God's protection. Verse 12, walk about Zion, go round to number her towers, consider well her ramparts, go through her citadels. In other words, look at this defence system and see in it God's ultimate protection and provision for his people. You know, even though we as God's people are as vulnerable as sheep, because God is present with us, we are indestructible. God will make sure no ultimate harm comes to us. And we should not just keep that news to ourselves, but pass that news on to others, pass that on to our children and our children's children. Verse 13, that you may tell the next generation that this is God, a God who protects, a God who can be trusted and relied upon. And because he can be relied upon, now he can be relied upon at all times, for all time. And that's how the psalmist finishes the psalm. Our God is, uh, uh, th this is God, our God forever and ever. He will guide us forever. Or there's a footnote in our translation. He will guide us even beyond death. You see, because God is with his people, because God is with us, he will provide for our every need. You know, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him freely give us all things? And all things means that he will lead us and guide us in our lives like a shepherd guides and leads his sheep. And he will guide us even to death and even beyond death. Because if you are trusting in Jesus Christ, then, then you will be raised from the dead just like Jesus was. Jesus will be with us even in death and he will lead us out the other side and we will be with God forever and forever. See, that's the confidence that that we can have because God is present with us. God will provide for all our needs because we are his people. Thanks so much for tuning in and listening. Uh, until next week, God bless.